Hi, my name is Athena Shear, and today I'll be talking to you about the nonlinear analysis of collagen and urine ovarian samples using second harmonic generation. Ovarian cancer is the fifth leading cause of death in cancer among women. This, is, this leads to the importance of early detection, as the earlier a patient is diagnosed, the better their prognosis is. Our lab is looking at the developing an endoscope that optimizes the minimally invasive diagnostic technique that could improve early detection. The minimally invasive diagnostic technique our group is using is second harmonic generation, or SHG, which is a nonlinear optical technique that provides information about collagen structure and organization. Collagen has been researched extensively in relation to cancer metastasis, with studies showing that collagen can increase hematoxic activity and in areas of increased invasion, collagen is pre present. Our hypothesis is that non-imaging, randomly sampled SHG measurements will be able to differentiate between normal and cancerous murine ovarian tissue. So I mainly worked on the um, data analysis part of this project, but so we started off with ovaries of 84 tag mice and 72 wild-type glitter that were imaged at four and eight weeks using a multi-photon microscope. And a multi-photon microscope uses near-infrared femtosecond lasers to generate nonlinear signals. So once this image was obtained, this image was actually a stack. So a stack is different images, which we call slices, taken at different steps. So we had to figure out the best way to encompass this data. Um, so we tried out three different methods for doing this. Our first method was to choose one random slice. Our second method was to generate a maximum image projection or what I call, or what we call an MIP. And this is when you take the signal in all of the individual slices and put them all together in one image. The third method was maximum mean slice, which meant that of the single stack, you took the single slice with the highest mean pixel value, and that was the slice you used. Once all this is done, we thresholded out the noise in the images, we obtained the mean of each slice, and we performed random sampling in groups of 10, 100, and 1,000. So random sampling means that for each slice that we chose, we had all of their pixels in a single array, and we randomly took 10 pixels and took the mean, and they randomly took 100 pixels and took the mean, and randomly took 1,000 pixels and took the mean. And this was to eliminate some expensive scanning components, potentially for the endoscope. So to the right here, you can see some images. So A and B represent the maximum mean slice method, while C and D represent the maximum image projection method. So you can see the difference between A and C and B and D, where there's a lot more signal encompassed in C and D as opposed to A and B, which does make sense. Um, a and C represent a four-week wild type, while B and D represent four-week tasks. So our preliminary results show that there is significance between the four-week data between the wild type and the tag. However, we saw no significance between the eight-week data. And in addition, our fork p value becomes significant after only 1,000 samples of the field of view. So significance in the four-week results show that there is a lower intensity of collagen SHG signal in mice with murine ovarian cancer, murine ovarian cancer. The results are not significant at eight weeks, possibly because more advanced cancers have heterogeneous in collagen content. And the p-value stabilizing after only 1,000 values show that utilizing this non-imaging approach may be sufficient for cancer detection. Our future directions include determining a more precise thresholding method, um, performing a more rigorous statistical analysis to ensure all of the different variables here are accounted for. And we're going to investigate the results of why four weeks was significant and why eight weeks was not significant. So thank you.